Hi, Facebook. Um, back in the car again. Um, I, my first question for all of you is if you could please help me out and report back on what exactly has happened to these first 12 days of December. Uh, it's a real mystery. I keep looking at my watch and knocking it to think maybe it's got the date wrong, but uh, we are racing past, uh, in fast headlong into the end of the year and the holiday season. Um, so once again, it is the time of year where everybody has lots of events, both to, there are several colliding vectors here. There's um, starting to have more meetings in Hartford, um, starting to talk about special session dates, starting to, uh, lots of uh, local organizations of all kinds are having holiday events uh, and also legislative breakfasts of various kinds to start to, to meet with legislators to talk about the priorities for this upcoming short session. So lots, lots, lots going on. I'm sure I'll miss stuff. I'll, I'll probably, I will definitely put some more information in the newsletter. So as always, please sign up for the newsletter if you don't already get it, because I stick more stuff in there. Um, so in no particular order here, um, the deadline for open enrollment at Access uh, Connecticut, Access Health Connecticut, is this Sunday, December 15th. So if you're looking to pick up health insurance or need to change your existing plan, uh, it's time to do that. I'll put information online about what all you need uh, in order to do that and where you might be able to get some help doing that. Um, I also want here's I want to highlight a few recent events, but one I'm going to start with one that I didn't actually make it to because I was not in Hartford for this, but I heard it was a fantastic event. It was a climate strike rally in Hartford on uh, Friday, December 6th, on the steps of the Capitol, and it was a really powerful rally. I have heard from all who attended, and particularly driven by young people who have been such powerful advocates on climate change, and and bravo or brava in this case to to the uh, the young advocates who who led this. Um, we look forward to working with you uh, in, in the upcoming session. Um, I attended a few other holiday-related events. I think I put, posted this earlier. But a bunch of stuff in Torrington. Torrington looks so beautiful uh, for the holidays. It is all lit up thanks to the... the um, downtown group who works on that. It really looks fantastic. And we did get a really scenic Christmassy kind of snow in the last couple days uh, that didn't cause too much traffic disruption, unlike the last one, but just stuck to everything beautifully. Um, so I, you went to a great event with uh, Lark, uh, their annual fundraiser. Um, it, also the opening dress rehearsal for the Nutmeg. If you haven't, um, A, if you haven't been to see the Nutcracker as performed by the Nutmeg Ballet Conservatory, you should definitely go. It's so fantastic. It's such a great holiday tradition. It used to be an important part of our family's tradition when our kids were younger in particular. Um, you can still get tickets for this coming weekend. So I'll put the, the website up there for you. Um, uh, there, uh, also in Torrington, the Christmas parade was last Sunday, which is so much fun um, and so, so packed with people from Torrington and the surrounding area out to see uh, everyone, you know, local bands, all kinds of local organizations, all of your elected representatives uh, dressed up for the holidays. And, and it ends in Torrington's Christmas Village, which, again, if you haven't been, you need to put on your itinerary. It's a very special place that was set aside. Uh, created for this purpose 70 odd years ago and Santa and Mrs. Claus are in residence as are his elves and uh, it is definitely worth a visit. It's a very charming fun, fun place to, be, to visit for all, for all of us so so put that on your itinerary if, uh, if you if you can. Um, what else? Uh, <laughs> there have been a couple of legislative nights recently. One, we held one recently, uh, the fire school in Torrington, Burville Fire School, um, held a legislative night in which we got a chance to speak to um, local fire services about a, a variety of things uh, of concern to them. As usual, uh, funding issues, particularly focused for on uh, the needs of volunteer um, fire departments. And the, the a lot of the t convers always conversation about the between training, which is really important, and, and an acknowledgement that we have learned so much over the, the past decades about how to better um, fight fires, uh, better technology, better training, and that's in, it is important, but it imposes a serious burden on our volunteers in particular in terms of cost, obviously, but also in terms of the distance they have to travel to get that training. And sometimes the legislature, uh, well intended as they may be, um, puts burdens on them that, that for things that they have to travel to one particular part of the state that's far away for. So um, I, I learned a lot speaking to them, and, and there's work to be done to, to make sure that we um, continue to, to provide um, appropriate training uh, based on what we know today about how best to treat uh, emergencies. Um, and 
but also impose burdens that are that are that make sense. So uh, that was a great meeting as always. Tuesday, December 10th was my daughter's, Abby's 21st birthday. So um, happy retrospective birthday, Abby. <laughs> she spent it studying for an exam, which I actually believe. Um, and this morning we had another legislative breakfast at Advance, uh, which does uh, education consulting work for the pu uh, public schools in our region. Um, had a conversation in which we talked on, you know, a lot of, actually a lot of the conversation at the end uh, focused on just basic advocacy, how uh, there are a lot of different moving parts in education. There are, you know, the teachers, the superintendents, the boards of education. And, and as we all know, it can, because, you know, parents are very, you know, it's important, it's an important thing to all of us. And, and it can be contentious to serve on those various boards. And sometimes all of, not everyone's interests are always aligned, but we talked about the importance of, of getting together, having regular conversations and working collaboratively to lobby for what they, they want the legislature to do to help them. Uh, which is not to say that there's one size fit all answer. There never will be. Um, but it was a really constructive conversation about how to, how to make sure that we understand their needs and that all of their needs are represented when we uh, raise various education related issues in the legislature to make sure that we get the right input that we need in order to make good decisions. Um, uh, tomorrow morning, the Northwest Chamber is having a meeting on uh, a lot. I think there are gonna be over more than 50 people there. Uh, so I'll stay tuned for more information about that. I'll put it in the, in the newsletter. Um, also, uh, tomorrow is, uh, we have an appropriations meeting to review. You may have heard there's conversation about the state has, has faced a, a large lawsuit from hospitals um, based on a very complex uh, taxing and reimbursement, federal reimbursement arrangement that has been going on. network connection so in the view that uh if this is <laughs> not coming through clearly my apologies um i am actually sitting in a parking lot in uh, hamden connecticut right now <laughs> touring the parking lots uh, as i have a meeting coming up in a few minutes uh, about on um, broadband uh here um some other upcoming events one um Sombra event that I just wanted to make sure I acknowledge that that you know December 14th is the seventh anniversary of the Sandy Hook uh, massacre and tragedy and um, we want to keep the, those 26 people that we lost that day uh, uppermost in our minds um, as we look at that there will be a vigil in Salisbury um, I'll post the information about that online on Salisbury at 5 p.m. on the 14th. There are many, many, many um, programs and scholarships that have been set up in the wake of, of Sandy Hook and a lot of organizations for Newtown and, and focused on a variety of ways to help those families and that community heal as best they can from that unimaginable um, violence. Um, but one of the things for sure that has come out of Sandy Hook uh, is that Connecticut has among the safest, uh, strongest gun safety laws in the country. And as a result, we have one of the lowest rates of gun deaths in the country. And that is something to be proud of that Connecticut took action. It's tragic that it took Sandy Hook uh, for us to do so, but we have done it and it is working. And so uh, lots of grassroots organizations have either sprung up or become more active and um, powerful in the wake of that and also in the wake of innumerable other um, gun violence um, and so that's a good thing uh, we are paying attention and we're trying to to address the situation as best we can and you may want a piece of re recent news uh, our Connecticut state treasurer Sean Wooden is beginning the process of divesting the state's pension funds from five civilian gun manufacturers so um, that's one more step in the right direction um, then I'm going to post a bunch of information about the holidays in general. I mean, there there's lots going on. I'm I am you know there's not a night goes by there isn't some other organization having some sort of holiday party, and it's really nice to get together with everyone. It's a chance to relax together and and talk about the year and just see a lot of people. Um, but as I have said before, the holidays are can be hard. 
Um, there, there's a lot of pressure on families. Um, you may miss someone that you've lost in the last year. Uh, it can be very emotional and you, um, you know, people need support this time of year. So one way to, you know, one of the things I'm going to post here is, is various places that you can keep warm if, cause it is, <laughs> it's pretty chilly out here today. Um, but another way, a metaphorical way for us to keep warm is to help others. And there are lots of places that need volunteers and help over the holidays. So I'll post some information about that too. Um, and, oh, the one other thing I want to touch base quickly on, I went to the, the uh, North Hills uh, Council of Governments meeting today. And it, you know, it is a fantastic organization. I think it was attended by every town in the COG today. It was um, really good. And that we talked about a bunch of things, um, including uh, tourism, food hubs, um, health enhancement communities, lots of stuff. I'll try to post some more information on the newsletter. I have a lengthy agenda here of the many things that we that we ripped through in the, the uh, couple hours of that meeting. So um, have a great rest of your week, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.